Good evening, everybody. This is your host, P Pistol B, Peter Blackburn. And we are going to play some Command Modern Air Naval Operations today. Uh oh. I need to figure something out. My new chat thingy isn't working. Oh, where is it? Saying I'm not connected. It's weird <coughs> because it's not showing me um, stuff. That's the bot. I don't like this new chat thingy I got going. So I'm going to close that one. And we're going to go bring up the other one. One second, folks. Okay. Trying to figure this out, folks. Hopefully we can get this figured out and we can get it taken care of. Okay, this one says connected, but the other one didn't. All right. Where do I go? Back to multi streaming. Over here. Get our settings. Okay. Sorry about this, folks. Just trying to get things working. Apply. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. You saw more of my desktop than I wanted you to. Okay. 
Okay. Start a new scenario. I believe we are on uh, tutorial, strike tutorial, strike tutorial number two. Yep, strike tutorial number two, which is driving in the daisies. German tornado stake strike craft. Should about twenty minutes to complete. Should take about twenty minutes to complete. <clears throat> Today you have a half squadron of German Tornado IDS, Interdictor Strike Aircraft, the Tornado. It's different than the F-16 multi role which we used in the Strike Tutorial number one, as it is a member of a family of aircraft, others being the Air Defense variant and the Electronic Combat Reconnaissance. The Tornado IDS is specialized in low-level strike into a heavily defended area so much more capable in that specific role than dedicated ground attack aircraft such as the A-20 or Sukhoi-25. In this tutorial, you will set up two missions, three actually, find, gra find ground targets and then strike them. Please enter the scenario, look around, and the first set of instructions will pop up in a few seconds. Alright, begin scenario. Okay, it looks like it's a BL seven five five is a cluster munition. Cool. Has a lot of aircraft that can carry it. It's pretty cool. All right, here we go. <clears throat> wow. The set up a standard anti-surface warfare mission followed the Steps. Drag select four reference points labeled Mission 1. Okay, mission one, hit control F11. Select the second option, new mission. New mission box will appear. Name your mission, whatever you like, as long as it is recognizable to do to you. Ground. Predict one. Class, choose patrol. For type, choose anti surface unit patrol ground. Status, leave active and don't adjust the the activation times as this is a simple mission. Is this live? This is live. This is not a silly video of me being silly. <clears throat> Leave the checkbox open mission editor window. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, this is ginger beer, so it's non-alcoholic for all those people out there who are wondering if I've wrecked my sobriety.
I have not. This is good stuff. Okay. And click OK. Mission editor pops up. Your mission name is in the upper left. Make sure it is selected. You can change the name of the box below. Below that, no changes needed to activation, mission, or doctrine. Moving right across the center of the bottom half. Leave try to keep box alone. <coughs> keep one third rule checked. Uncheck and uncheck investigate contacts outside of patrol area. Uncheck investigate contacts within weapon range. Oh, I'm tonight's entertainment. Thanks, everybody. Hi, McGee family. How's it going? Okay. Leave. Leave act, uh, active emissions unchecked. Nothing else to touch, but note that the aircraft will fly in flight of two right here and will not take off until there are two ready to go. <coughs> Moving for the right, still in the bottom. There are four RPs with the same name, Mission 1. If they are not there, go back to the map, select them, and hit add points currently highlighted. Don't change anything else, but note the flight mission parameters. Note the order the reference points are added is how the mission planner selects them. To select your selection, select validate area. Area validation, okay. Where to go? Okay, there it is. Whew. Scared me for a second. Using the up, down arrows in the box, change the order of the RPs until you have a square. If you press that, okay. Go directly to the unassigned unit selector box. Click the plus sign beside the six times tornado IDS. Tornado IDS. It's tornado, isn't it? Because it's Panavia. Because it's what? Italian, I think. British, maybe. Check the boxes besides Bomber 1. Okay. So I'm going to check the box besides 1, 2, 3, and 4. Even though it says check the boxes besides Bomber number 1, number 1, number 3, and number 4. Use these thingies to move forward to the other side. Once you're done, close the mission editor and run the game. Okay. Okay. Close the mission editor and game is running. Um, let's see. If I click on this. Okay, it should be ready. Awesome, it's ready. I don't know how long it's going to take him to get in the air. We'll see. And while we're seeing that, i got to go to YouTube. And click on the stop button on my YouTube stream, on my YouTube window, live streaming thing for the Creator Studio. Because it plays it, and then it says there's somebody else watching. And... It's really weird when one of my viewers is myself. Okay. Let's speed this up. Hopefully, hopefully I did this right. Okay. Bomber 1 and 2 have departed, departed Blue Base. Blue Base. Okay, so I think I have, um, 
MCON. Air operations. MCON settings is passive. All right. <coughs> so the Canadians don't operate the Panavia Tornado. They use uh, F-18s, don't they? Now what should happen is that two tornadoes should take off with and a group with radars on, they will proceed to the missionary at high altitude and search for targets. If they find them, they will automatically strike them within the definition of their weapons release author authority. Once in the patrol area, they will drop to low altitude in accordance with their loadout profile, high, low high, and look for targets. You will note that their altitude in, in the search is around 1980 feet. If you mouse over the area and check the data block, the ground altitude is about 1780 feet. Checking in the group status block, you'll see the altitude is about 1980 ASL above sea level and 200 feet AGL. It's important to remember these two reference altitudes when planning the missions. Yeah, yeah, don't don't plan an AGL, uh, an ASL mission, slam into the ground. CF-18As. They don't even have the new ones, do they? That's what their big deal with Boeing is, was this last year, was that they're going to buy the, what, the Echo models? Or the Foxtrot models? Whichever model it was. They want to buy the one with the upgraded uh, engines and avionics. Can't remember. Not Canadian. Nor do I have stock in Boeing group composition. Let's speed this up a little. I like the one to five seconds. That's kind of my favorite one. It my missions tend to last longer, but the one to fifteen just it's a little fast for me. Okay, it looks like he's dropping altitude. Wow, he really screamed down there. So yeah, um, I'll probably stream this and the next tutorial, depending upon how long it is. And then I'll, should put me pretty close to an hour for stream, hopefully. So he's just going to sit here and bounce back in there, eh? Okay. Um, you might find your target, or you might not. Apparently, this is the scud, scud hunting from uh, the first Gulf War. Ground targets are very hard to find. Thankfully, these ones are moving, which makes it much easier. Picture yourself in the cockpit of an aircraft at 200 feet. That's the height of a church steeple. Radio master, tall tree. Flying at lordy speed of 350 knots. Looking for guys who don't want to be found. <laughs> If they are not moving, they have camouflage up and will be very stealthy moving at least moving at least you might have a chance. If you did not find someone, your units automatically if you did find someone, your units automatically attack them and the second pair has taken over the job. You will note that this might not be the most efficient way of looking for ground targets as that 6 hour ready time is a heck of a wait. <coughs> To, this, to do this task properly, you would need an entire squadron of 12 aircraft with 3 to 4 on maintenance and 8 to 9 constantly running this patrol 24-7. Wow. It's 
crazy. So. Let's see if we find anybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. Strike aircraft are valuable. You never have enough of them. You don't want to lose them. They take a long time to prepare. And munitions are such that you may want to plan as opposed to leave it to your fighter jockeys to drop the world on whatever they see. <clears throat> so that is why commanders take some valuable and scarce strike assets and use them for reconnaissance. There are several reasons you might use a reconnaissance aircraft instead of hunting with your strikers. The reconnaissance pods give them an advantage. The, they are usually quicker, quicker to ready, in this case three hours, versus six for the strike aircraft. They don't expand the reconnaissance pods, which can be reused. Since there is no droppable ordnance, many recon loadouts have a quick turnaround setting. Your strikers can wait on the ground, ready to roll on any target, and you can then launch and strike with munitions at your discretion. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Quick turnaround is a setting that certain aircraft have with certain loadouts based on proven capability <coughs> and doctrine, in this case Bomber 5, <coughs> with the GAF reconnaissance pod, is quick turnaround turned on. Each aircraft is specific, but in this case, if the predicted sortie time is less than 8 hours, for sortie is under 4 hours. The aircraft will land, refuel, probably change pilots, do quick repairs, and take off again in 30 minutes. If the parameters for quick turnaround are not met, the aircraft will take a 3 hour stand down time, which is the time, which is the same as its loadout ready time. Very handy, and bomber number 5 is becoming ready in a minute or two. A nice surprise. Okay. We're going to set up a couple of missions that will work together. <coughs> that will work together a recon mission and a strike mission. So let's start. First, note that nasty looking red unit, this right here, is a fairly common Cold War era SAM, this SA 5. It's been around since the 50s. But this is an updated C version, and the missile is the size of a telephone pole. So it will hurt if it hits you. It has 18 missile launchers, 5 radars, 6 close-in AA gun systems, too big for us to handle. And that AAA makes it tricky to get close to anyway. You'll also note that the red ring around the SAM completely encompasses the mission to RP. RP is what to do. In most military situations, you need to pit your strengths against the enemy's weaknesses. This is a classic case of the right tool for the job. What, <coughs> what is a key strength of a tornado? Low-level flying. What is a key weakness of an SA-5? This leads, to a this leads to the military principle of know your enemy. Let's check the database. Click the SA-5. Then click on the blue hyperlink to go to the database. Beyond the, nasty pic beyond the nasty picture, you find a bunch of things about the unit, like it's got 36 reload magazines, reload missiles in its magazine. The most important bit though is the missiles themselves. Note the missile name detail is where is it at the 
the 5v28m5. Go to the top in the class key in s a dash 5. There's only one C. Really? Because it looks like there's a lot of C's. Oh, whoops. Type. Oh, duh, idiot. Not a smart one today, guys. Type in SA-5. There's only one C. All right, you have three options. There's only one C, so take a look. Notice anything useful? Target altitude, perhaps? Where's that at? Oh, there we go, target altitude. All right. Target altitude, 650 feet AGL, up to 130,000 feet AGL. This thing can shoot down a U-2 at 95,000 feet, but it can't shoot down a tornado at 200 feet. So we have a plan. We have a plan! Next, set up the RPs for mission two. Select the RPs, RP selected, control F11. Similar patrol mission, air to ground. Oh, I need to change the name. Don't die. All right, area validated. Got it. Okay. Add bomber five. Warning, some aircraft on this mission will not be able to take off due to flight size restrictions. Okay. <clears throat> Remember you have it set to the default of two and you've only added aircraft change flight size to a single aircraft. Single aircraft. Check all the bottom, all the boxes in the center column. Do, do, do. On the right hand side of the box, very important, set transit altitude to 600 feet. Station altitude to 200 feet. The aircraft has no weapons to track, but just in case you have the doctrine set to strafing, set the attack altitude to 200 feet as well. All right, put a check in all three terrain following boxes. This mission will use a lot more fuel because of the altitude, but hopefully you find your target quickly. Now, if you find a target, there's no point allowing it to live. So you'll need to set a strike mission. Remember back in tutorial one, I mentioned that NATO bombs had some attachments you could add. This is an example. The Mark 82 is a standard 500 pound dumb bomb. But you can imagine 
what might happen if you drop a low drag bomb at very low altitude. All that shrapnel can be very bad for your aircraft's complexion. Also, a good rule of thumb for dumb bombs is to drop them low to improve accuracy. Stabilizing helps them helps accuracy even more, so the air inflatable retarder slows the bomb down to allow your aircraft to egress a little further before it explodes. Okay, so when your recon flight finds a target, you want to launch your strike aircraft with Mark 82 air bombs, fly in low and fast, drop your bombs, and stay well under the SA-5 engagement on the boat. So let's set up a strike mission. Okay, strike mission, control F-11. Name your mission. Strike. Land strike. Active. All right, flight size. Single aircraft. Just above flight size is a drop down which selects the level of identification to trigger the mission. Hostile. Assign Bomber 6. Bomber 6 to the mission. Leave target list blank. Couple important points. We will leave allow off axis attack unchecked. Okay, we don't want to strike. We don't want the strike to wander into the SA-5 range too much, and this would allow the AI to select an off-angle attack direction that may stray too far from our current intent. No tankers or escorts. The way this is now set up, the mission will launch on any hostile target, wherever. Whenever a detected problem, we have that nasty SA-5, which is both detected and hostile, but we don't want to go near it. Our target hasn't been found yet. Not an issue. Measure the distance between the base and the SA-5. Or select the base and watch the cursor data to see the range as you move the mouse. Da -da -da. Okay, so... I read the range, the SA-5, at 340 nautical miles, and the outer limit of the Mission 2 box is about 320 nautical miles, so put in a maximum strike radius of 320 halfway down the center column. Okay, maximum 320. Now you're ready to launch your second set of missions. Awesome. Okay. So one problem is where is his um it doesn't have the oh, I don't know altitude that's what I'm looking for. Altitude. Set up. Okay. Anyway. Oh, I need that. Cramp. Missions. Editor. There you go. Okay, mission, mission. Strike aircraft type IDS with loadout market two. Q 
cannot launch. Reason the mission is... No flight plan has been generated and target and they will not launch. Okay. He launched now, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Okay. All right, we launched the second mission. Hey, we bombed them. Awesome. I'll see you in tutorial three, where we attack a more complex target. Your score is 100. Dropped five Mark 82s. Kill the communication hub. Good job, us. Good job, us. Jobus. Who the heck is Jobus? Alright, start menu. Start new scenario. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering, the price went up. Like, I think at midnight. <laughs> when the steam sale ended. When the steam winter sale ended. There. So, the price of Command Modern Air Naval Operations on Steam is back to $80. All right, complex strike. Using MiG 23s. This tutorial should take about an hour to complete. Man. Okay. There are no instructions. That's it. <laughs> Outside of this briefing. So your task today is neutralize Zinder Airport. The word neutralize is important. Aircraft airports are almost impossible to, to destroy from the air. To properly destroy an airport. Or nuclear weapons, yeah. Bombs will put holes in craters in tarmac and cement. Those can be filled quite easily. Buildings can be blown up, but tents and weather shelters can replace them in hours. Fuel and munitions will be destroyed, but can be quickly replaced. So your job is to close the airport for as long as possible, thereby preventing enemy aircraft from using it. So what makes... And up an airport, click on Zender Airport. Um, all right. Hopefully, everything goes okay because I don't know what that's all about. Hit nine. Yeah, I am not even in this narrow unit yet. So let's take a look at her. Assets, one Sukhoi 24. Great for finding out which of the parking spots are occupied by aircraft. But remember, you cannot see into hangars or harden air sh aircraft shelters. 24 M2 Fencer D. These are your heavy strike platforms. They have your only penetrators, a key weakness in Soviet area munitions. They have also have some decent 500 pound guided bombs. MiG 23s. These have a mix of anti runway, cluster bomb, incendiary bomb, general purpose bombs, and rockets. Key, think, think, 
think to note, yeah, think to note, is that none of these munitions are guided and all have a low, low, low profile. It's a good thing your target is only about 100 nautical miles away. You may note that the range in this profile for these aircraft is quite short. Next step is to figure out your plan. What do you want to destroy? Why and when? Timing is important. There are ways of making everything arrive at the target at once, but this would be complex and quite unrealistic. The commander of the attack would only want a maximum of two to four aircraft directly over the target at any one time. Otherwise, the risk of collision is way too high. CMNA Simano does not model mid-air collisions, nor does it model shrapnel from one strike hitting an aircraft from another, but it does model the time it takes for aircraft to do things like take off, assemble, etc. The subject of time on target is quite an active discussion on the forums and coordinating complex strikes is one of the most fun and satisfying aspects of the game. In this scenario you will have a few aircraft to coordinate. Imagine that you have aircraft from several different bases some needing refueling to reach the target now add surface and air launch cruise missiles flying programmed routes layer in some helicopters artillery surface to surface missiles and you have an interesting problem to handle you can worry about that later right now you need to think about timing your reconnaissance and strike assets so do you want to close the runway first kill the radar first destroy ammo and fuel first kill parked aircraft first these are all good answers your job is to choose one All right, first let's take a better look. I really hope that he has a set of instructions because I really don't want to have to reread this thing. But I'm probably going to have to. Okay, begin scenario. Uh, blue base. 17 of 17 aircraft are ready. Probably get this thing going. All right, so two medium aircraft on on the tarmac. How do I get? zoomed into a point where I can actually see everything. Uh, this is junk, but it'll work. Tarmac space. There's the runway, runway access point for a large aircraft. Ammo bunker, have gas. Probably gonna have to do this on our own. So, Control F11. Recon. Patrol. Round. don't have any reference points. Oh, that's right. 
Okay, contacts. Well, add a reference point. Control insert. All right. Eleven. Recon. Patrol. Ground. Mission. Recon. Single aircraft. Select. Sukhoi Recon Aircraft. Area validated, okay. All right, recon is out. Runway. Land strike. Anti runway bombs. Strike. Fuel, fuel, fuel. No, I want to hit aircraft in the open, so tarmac. No, radar. Anything with two hundred fifties or five hundreds? Let's take the two fifty crap. <laughs> Light size restrictions. Section. All right. Recon one is outbound. Uh, 
All right. These are the 250 pound cluster bombs. Our anti tank bomblets. It's out of weapon range, that's fine. I have four. So they have two each. Okay, so I'm going to try to hit those three with that guy. I have crap. Crap. This is my radar attack mission. All right. All right, does it say what mission it's on? There it is, mission, radar, land strike, okay. I need, uh, I need to set up the other two flights. Okay. Tarmac strike. Land strike. Okay. Tarmac. Section of two.
Okay. So we want to add tarmac space to one, two, three. our targets for that. All right. Hangar strike. Understand general target area. Blah, blah, blah. I need do that. Let's hit the No, that's not going to be I'm going to go hit that one. All right. <clears throat> On an airfield, you will have a very good idea where buildings are and how things are laid out. It's hard to move a building or a runway, but new buildings or other structures could have been built since you last get intelligent in an area. Identify the enemy is deployed. Click on contact report. Saw Cessna 337 Super Skymaster. Decisions. Adjustment. Once your recon aircraft finds out where the bad guys are parked, you should adjust the target list of any strikes that are hitting the parking spaces. But remember, you cannot see inside the hangar, so assume that it has something in it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. 
Um, let's go. Ten. Fire shelter. Land strike. All right, those look like general purpose bombs. Yep. I'm gonna change it to single section. Okay, so we need one for fuel. And ammo, so strike, land strike. Centauri bombs. Yep, change the section. We're gonna hit. Ammo pad. Yeah, we're gonna hit the ammo pad. This one, I need to look at ammo bunker surface. It's a two harm. Damage points, 1,600. Okay, so. We need. Bunker. Land strike. That's rockets, it's not gonna help. Ah, oh, crap, these probably won't help either. Runway. Ah, oh, crap. I need to change that mission. Mission. Mission editor. Runway. Okay, so that mission's flying in a lot later than I planned on it.
Blue Strike 3. Blue Strike 3 is hitting the radar with 250 pound bombs. Come on, tell me you have a. Thirty. Dang it! Only thirty damage points. All right, I destroyed one enemy aircraft. Well, that was a... I did manage to get some good hits. The radar is still standing. All right. shelter one radar these guys could really mess up but I'm gonna send them after the radar Radar two. All right. Problem is tarmac's inbound, and I just freaking bomb the freaking tarmac with the other guys because I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, come on. All right. Can select a unit, change it. Yep. Okay, I need to mission reference point, mission editor, radar two. Radar two, it's not gonna allow me to go after the radar.
Just let me oh, screw it. I'll do it the other way. Launching those on their own. Real time, okay. What? How did I screw that up? Turn to base. Taxi into a parking spot. Ah. <sighs>
Swoop 60 has no units dissolving. All right, I'm gonna get those guys launched now. I think it's ridiculous that they are not taken off. It's important to hit all the drop down boxes. Hopefully. We get all of, we get all of it, and it goes boom. Okay, all weapons of this type. All right, hopefully, he will drop now. Engage defensive, airborne. Loose track one has been removed from mission, mission, runway. He'll be in the air in a few seconds. All right. We got some good hits this time around, folks. Terminal building's gone. Small aircraft has... The target is a waste of ammo. Blue Strike 9, Blue Strike 10. Oh. Blue Strike 2 is in the air. Blue Strike 2. of this time to the target. All right. Okay, he still has two. All 
All right, bombs away. All right, we impacted the Zender ammo bunker a few times. Heavy damage, light damage, radar still no damage, heavy damage to the runway. Penetrator, you. You guys that uh, didn't drop anything, I don't know what happened. We're gonna bomb him with incendiaries now. Now I've just made a mess of everything because that's what I'm really good at. Bombs away. Missed. All right. Strike eight. Okay, incendiary bombs. All right, we missed with the incendiary bombs. 
They have a nice effect though. All right, all incendiary bombs have been released. All right, should be coming in to drop anti-runway bombs. All right, runway suffered heavy damage, major fire. I don't think he has any weapons left that I can use. All right, Let's see how well this last guy does. <laughs> you should watch for unexpended ordnance if the threat level is low. For instance, if your one of your Sukhoi 24s drops three, two out of its three weapons, it'll you just sit there unassign it. And then you sweep up. It's a shame to, to waste a perfectly good bomb. That's right. Uh-oh. I think I've got aircraft that are going to crash. Blue Strike 2! Blue Strike 2! Anti-runway bombs will be dropped in 5, 4, Two, one, drop, drop, drop. No armor penetration. Medium damage only. Now I'm just going to wait for my aircraft to crash. Your last strikes are probably coming in right about now. With any luck, this airport is a smoking ruin and will take several days of concerted effort to repair. <laughs> if you weren't quick enough at closing the base, some of the resident aircraft may have taken off. Well, you have guns for that. If you're quick, you may have kept all aircraft on the ground. You can see them in the parking areas, but not the ones in the hangar. So make sure you kill that just in case. You can always retask assets to focus on these guys once you find them. An airbase with no aircraft is not much good to anyone. And the best enemy aircraft is a smoking pile of twisted metal, no matter how it arrives at that state. Yes. Thing blue strike six and seven are going to crash. <laughs> All right, your strikes should be just about finished now. No rush if they aren't. Take your time. I would recommend you try this again and experiment. First, you may want to load up your save game in editor mode. And check out the red side to see what the actual damage is, compared to what your BDA is telling you. Another idea of the multiple strike missions is to make a patrol mission 
name it holding or marshalling, turn one third rule off, set flight size to pairs, and assign all your aircraft. Then you can micro the attack, micromanage each detail and bring your aircraft in at your leisure. You will need to you unassign them from your holding mission before you conduct your attacks though or it might confuse them. They, they're only pilots after all. Careful that the Reds don't scramble on you once they see you coming though. When you have large strikes with dozens of aircraft this marshalling technique is a good way of setting things up getting get everyone airborne and dump them into a strike mission all at once to overwhelm heavily heavy defenses so we're playing around see you in tutorial 4 where the enemy might try and fight back dun 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 seven minutes of fuel left Blue strike, seven and eight aren't going to make it. They're just not going to make it. So what are we going to do before they don't make it? Let's go to scoring and immediately quit the scenario. It's only a minor victory. We expended a lot of ordnance today, folks. However, we destroyed five Cessna. 337 Super Skymasters, one aircraft hangar, one av gas tanker tank, one building, the airport terminal, and one control tower, and the ammo pad. So that, that was nice. Yeah, we got runway closed. Yay! Alright, folks. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. I'm going to call that a stream for tonight. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe and click on that little bell thingy for notifications because that's what we're all supposed to say, apparently, when we do YouTube videos. Um, yeah, so I hope you have a wonderful night. Stay out of trouble. You know, let your families know just how special they are to you. And... We'll see you later.